So today is Wednesday, April 14th, and it is 12.30 p.m. And we're here at Geneva United Methodist Church. My name is Brennan Hamilton with the UNI Rural Schools Museum, and I will be interviewing Jamie here today. Thank you so much for interviewing with us. So please state your full name and the school that you went to and then what years you attended school. Okay, so my name is Jamie Ranke. Uh, I went to Applington Parkersburg and I graduated there in 1993. Where were you born? I was born in Waterloo actually um, and uh, my family pretty much has always lived around Applington, um, Applington Parkersburg area is where I grew up most of my life. Um, when were you born? Uh, my birthday is January 4th, 1975. So what is your family like? My parents were young when I was born, uh, I think 20 and 21, and I'm the oldest out of four kids. I have two sisters and one brother, and we are all really close in age, uh, four kids within like five and a half years. So my parents divorced when I was in third grade. And the year after that, when I was in fourth grade, we moved to Arizona for one year with my mom. And then we moved back again. Uh, bef the first uh, kindergarten, first, second, and third grade, I had gone to Applington School. And then fourth grade, I was in Arizona. Fifth grade, when my when we moved back, I went to Parkersburg. Fifth grade through 11th grade, it was always, I was always in Parkersburg school. And then my senior year in 12th grade, we joined Applington and Parkersburg. So I was kind of lucky that I knew almost all the kids because I had gone to both schools. Uh, my dad still lived in Applington. I went to church in Applington. So I knew, I went through sports, a lot of kids. And so, so yeah, so, and our grandparents all lived right there too. So we were really close with our grandparents and some of our more extended family as well. Family now, I'm married, I have my husband, Shannon, and I have two sons that are 17 and 11. And so do you wanna say the names of your siblings and also the names of your children? Sure, so my siblings are Kelly Rogers. She lives in Ackley or outside of Ackley. Angela Best, she lives in Iowa Falls, and Christopher Best, and he lives in Winona, Minnesota. And my kids now are Benjamin Ranke, again 17, and Nicholas Ranke, 11. So when you were a child, how far away did you live from your school? But when I lived in Applington, I lived maybe like three miles out in the country and rode the bus. Uh, when I lived in Parkersburg, I lived in town. So I only like I think elementary, I walked like two blocks to school and high school, maybe like I live four, four blocks or so away. And yeah, so not, not super far, most of my, most of my years. So did you typically walk or how did you get to school? Uh, yeah, mostly, mostly like, especially in Parkersburg, um, I would walk almost every day. Yeah. Or once in a while I would catch a ride or something, but most of the time I would walk. Did you ever walk with anyone else or were you by yourself? Um, my sisters, but I mean a lot of times by myself. Were there any unique or distinctive ways that you got to school? Not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think so. I was like, do you remember anything special? I, I just, I remember that I, some, like often, and maybe it was more in junior high, um, but I would have early morning basketball practices um, before school or even the other sports too once in a while but um, having to walk to school at like 5 30 in the morning and it was cold and nasty once in a while then I would catch rides from my mom or my mom worked early though so a lot of times I either walked or I'd get a ride from another friend's parents. Were there ever any troubles getting to school? No I don't think so. And did you ever cross a river or a railroad while you walked? No. So what were some of your interests as a child? I would say as I grew up, I, I really enjoyed sports. And so I got involved. I was pretty involved in school in general, uh, but especially in sports. In high school, I was out for cross country a couple of years, basketball three years, but especially I really liked track and softball. So. I played a lot of softball, so yeah, I mean, but I was also involved in like student council and some other things like that, so, but kind of, I guess I would say sports was my main thing. Okay, did you like school? Why are I not? did, yeah, I did. I mean, I enjoyed the social part of it, and I will say and admit school was really easy for me, like the classwork, so I mean, being there wasn't, didn't seem like work, I guess. So when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? 
I don't know. I don't know if I still know. I know at different times, a few different things. Um, at one time I was hoping to become some, something with science always. Uh, but um, physical therapy was something that I was actually going to go to college for. And then I changed my mind on that. I changed my mind a few times. Uh, I don't know if I really ever had a set set thing that I that I remember really thinking that's what I want to do. Was school seen as an option or a requirement for you by your family? A uh, requirement for sure. <laughs> so what's your earliest memory of school? Well I remember being in elementary school in Applington and I, I re like some faint memories like I remember some of the older kids because the high school it was all K through 12 then in Applington so I remember being a little little kid and seeing all these high schoolers and thinking how cool they were mm -hmm. I also remember I mean a couple one really sort of sad and scary thing uh, I remember being in second grade and I was in Mrs. Fink's class in Applington and it was a multi-story school so it was on the second uh, floor and one day there was like a, a very tragic like a murder suicide happened like a woman killed her whole family like kids that were in our school right across the street from the school and i remember that we had to have our shades pulled the whole day and like mm -hmm. it was super scary so i i mean things like that sort of like you don't forget that like i remember yeah and i, I remember who my teachers were all the way through pretty much i think yeah those are kind of my some of my first though i remember just the playing i remember the older kids a lot i know you mentioned that you went to three different schools so what were some of the similarities or differences between those schools? Well, I will say the biggest, I, I mean, I can draw some huge differences from when I went to school in Applington, which was a town of 1500, to when I was in fourth grade, we moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, the schools were dramatically different in size, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, in diversity, there was, I mean, all white kids in Applington, you go to Phoenix and you've got kids from everywhere um, of all different ethnicities and races. And the campuses themselves were very different because the climate, of course, is much warmer there. So it was um, a lot of open air campuses with smaller buildings, but you know, you'd walk outside to go to a different class or something. So instead of everything contained into one large building, I mean, between those schools, a lot of differences but then between you know between the Applington and Parkersburg not all that much different. What did a typical morning before school look like? As I was older I had sports practice a lot in the morning or some a lot of times different activities I, m I remember having driver's ed before school things like that so uh, so a lot of times I was up and up and going pretty early and went to school and for something. I can't remember, but I, I do remember there was a time when my mom was working at the at a hospital in Waterloo and she was gone quite early. And so my siblings and I, we pretty much got ourselves going in the morning, but we were old enough to do that. As I got older, even more, uh, my junior and senior year of high school, I was in sports after school, so I got a job working before school. So I um, had to get up at like five in the morning and go to work for a few hours before I went to school. So that was pretty much my getting ready. It was really brief because I was working. So did your schools at all have a uniform or a dress code that you had to adhere to? No. Okay, so what did students typically wear? I mean, if I were jeans and sweatpants, just casual clothes, yeah. I mean, I don't really remember that too much, but. Okay, yeah. Casual. I know I didn't do anything too too extravagant. So going back to the school, do you remember any defining features or interesting parts of your, the school building itself that maybe set it apart from the other schools, like having a separate gym and cafeteria, for example, anything like that? Like the old Applington School, I really remember having. It was it was old. My grandparents went there, and it was three stories. Uh, mostly the high school was in the third and and part of the second, but some of uh, some of the elementary uh, classes were in second floor, and like our music classroom and stuff was there. I just remember it having two gyms, which back then seemed really cool that we would have two gymnasiums. One was just called the old gym and the new gym. And other than that, I, I remember that. There was a balcony in the new gym uh, for seating and beyond like behind the balcony was what they called the student lounge mm -hmm. and like kids that were seniors i think maybe could go in there and there was like couches and everybody could just hang out i don't really know like if it was during study halls 
I don't know, I just thought it was really cool that they could do that. So what technology did your school have access to? Well, I don't really remember having much in my elementary years until maybe fifth or sixth grade. They started getting a few computers in the library only though, and they were computers that were probably like Apple IIe or something like that. They're really the, the earlier versions. And then, and then when I got into middle school and high school, same. I mean, I learned to type on an electric typewriter. I didn't learn on a computer. And I took computer applications when I was in like maybe a sophomore or so as a class and it was on an Apple IIe. So the most we really had when I was in school was, was stuff like that. Yeah, did you ever utilize like email or uh, Oregon Trail potentially any of those? Nope. In fact, I don't even know if I had email during my college years, hardly at all. Maybe my last two years, I think I might have a little, but it was pretty, um, pretty new. So did your school offer any technology classes? A few. Um, like I said, I took computer applications and I think there was a computer programming class, but beyond that, I can't remember anything else. I don't think so. Well, do you know where those would have been taken? Or did you have like a set computer lab or anything? Mm -hmm. Yep, there was a computer lab that was kind of attached to one of the math classrooms. And that same teacher that taught math taught the computer classes as well. So when students arrived to school, like what did you typically do? Or what did you and your classmates do? Younger years, I think we had recess first and then we all went in and started school later in high school. I mean, I remember getting, uh, you know, depending on the day, like if I had a practice or something, I would get ready at school and locker room and then I, we must have eaten. I don't know, I can't remember that part, okay. but because I don't think that the school served breakfast like mm -hmm. they do now, okay. um, but we must have eaten something. <laughs> and then um, I suppose we just hung around until we started classes. I really don't remember what we did. <laughs> okay. So how many students were in your graduating class? I believe there was 65 or 64 actually. So how do you remember your classmate? Fondly, uh, had a lot of fun. Yeah, we, I still keep in touch with a lot of them. Um, thankfully we have Facebook now, so keep in touch with most of them that way. But some of my best friends are still some of my high school friends. So how would your classmates remember you? Probably outgoing, maybe somewhat at the time, life of the party type person. So what were some of the classes you took? I took kind of some of the usual ones. Algebra, Algebra 2, Geometry. I think I took Advanced Math or something, which was probably like Trigonometry or Calculus now. I took Biology, Chemistry, Physics, all the English classes, two or three years of Spanish, American History. Like I'm trying to think what else I took, PE, of course, uh, stuff like that. Did you have any favorite or least favorite classes? I was never a huge fan of like my English courses, like writing and uh, reading, but I think as I got older, I obviously changed that because in college, my major was communication. So I did most of most of my writing and reading in college, I think, but I really enjoyed most of my math, uh, especially my advanced class, advanced math class. My senior year was a lot of fun, had a really fun teacher for that, but I, I like my science classes. We really have had good science teachers and really enjoyed my science classes as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you have a lot of exams or writing assignments? I don't really remember having a lot of exams or writing assignments. And in fact, I, I remember my freshman year of college, I came back one weekend and I ran into my high, one of my high school English teachers and she asked how things were going. And I said, you know, like, I really wish you would have made us write more because now I feel like it's a struggle. I'm like learning again how to write a paper. Oh. So yeah, I, I remember having some, but nothing like crazy hard. What sort of school supplies did you have to bring each year? The usual things like pens, pencils, paper, folders, that kind of stuff. So I know you mentioned that you had a music room. What did that look like? Well, um, I was not in band, but I was in vocal music. And so we had two or three different teachers throughout my vocal music high school days, but like a big room, with a few different riser type platforms and yeah, there was a lot of kids in choir back in those days. You know, it was a big, kind of a big thing. What kind of type of singing voice did you have? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good, but it was a fun class to be in. Did you have to take any mandatory lessons for it? Uh, not necessarily all the time, but I remember taking some special lessons like before we had um, contest type 
things to practice things. Do you know, did you use the Fullerton Music Education Program at all? I don't know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so did your choir ever go to Allstate? I don't remember going to Allstate. So when you were younger, and also maybe also in high school as well, did your teacher ever use like radio, the recorder, um, electric keyboard, or other instruments for music? I faintly remember playing a recorder, but I don't really think we had, I don't remember radio or any kind of thing like that. Like all of our music teachers then could play the piano, so they pretty much accompanied everything with the piano. So did your school, you mentioned that your school had PE, did you like PE? Yeah, it was fun. Okay, yeah. Did you have to wear specific uniforms for PE? I feel like we did for a couple of years, uh, maybe like when I was in middle school or early high school, but then as I got older, I don't think we had to anymore. But yeah, I remember red shorts, white shirt. Mm -hmm. the, it was only, it was definitely before we joined be, with Applington because I remember the Parkersburg Crusaders logo was on the shirt. What were some of the activities or games that you played during PE? Oh man, we had a great PE teacher and he made everything fun. I mean, we did everything from the basic kickball and basketball type stuff, volleyball. We played pickleball mm -hmm. before it was cool. We had archery, we did um, fishing, we did bowling, we did square dancing. I don't know, we did. We, we even did roller skating. Yeah, I mean, we probably did all kinds of other made up games like scooter hockey and stuff mm -hmm. that people do. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. Was PE separated by gender? No. How frequently did you have PE? I think we had it every other day. Did you have to use the presidential fitness test or like a fitness group yes. pacer? Okay, so when did you have to start doing that? I feel like I remember doing that in elementary school, fifth and sixth grade, maybe. Yeah, did you always, I know part of that is that you have to run the mile. Was it always a mile or did it become a mile as you got older? <laughs> I don't remember when that, if, it, if or when it changed. Um, I remember some of the tests that we had to do, but I can't remember that part. Did you have any favorite tests or least favorite tests? I'm the least favorite for me was that hanging pull up or something. Uh, I can't yeah. remember what it was even called. Like you have to just hold yourself and hang above a bar. Really had a hard time. I couldn't do that. 50 yard dash. I remember doing. I was really good at that in elementary school for sure. Standing long jump a mile. Yeah, I can't remember them all now, but I remember doing a bunch of different things. Did you always have to take PE or did your school offer alternatives? No, nope, we had to take it. And I know that you mentioned um, that you were a part of the sports in your school. So what were some of the competitions like for um, athletics and the different sports you were in? Like I said, I was in all like four sports, but really I was really into track. Our track coach was fantastic. He was pushed us really hard. And I remember all my years of high school, we had great track teams. Girls track was, I don't know what the right word is, but we had a lot of kids out. And I don't think in my high school years, we ever got less than third at a track meet, like as a team. So I went to state my freshman and my junior years of high school in different events and and I remember having such a good time like it was hard but it was it felt like we had a good coach that was really supportive and really pushed us hard softball we played maybe it's a little different now um, not not quite so much but um, we played almost every night of the week um, so we played sometimes five, six, seven games a week because we'd have a tournament on Saturday where we might play two or three games as well. Mm -hmm. So during the summer, like during the months of like end of May and all of June and part of July, we were playing pretty much all the time playing softball. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's pretty much what I did. Did sports ever conflict with classes at all? Not really. The only time that I really remember getting out of school because of sports was like for state track. I know that you mentioned also that you took Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. Did your school offer any other foreign languages? No. Okay. Did you like taking Spanish? It was okay. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like love it. I, I don't feel like I was really good at it. I enjoyed it. I still remember a few words and bits and pieces. So did your school offer any art classes? They did. Did you take art? I did not. Um, did your school offer any either special education classes or gifted classes? 
They did, yes. I don't remember a lot about that. I remember there was a re like what we called the resource room um, mm -hmm. for kids that needed extra help. And then there was a talented and gifted program. And I was even in it, but I, now I'm like, what do we even do? Who was in charge of it? I can't even remember who the teacher was. <laughs> I guess, would you know if um, your talented and gifted classes were pretty similar or different from the standard classes or? I mean, we didn't have like what I think today are like honors classes or AP classes. Mm -hmm. We, I don't believe we had that, but we had, it was like a separate activity. So like once a week or something, we would get together mm -hmm. and then you, we did things like all outside of school. Like we did like mock trial mm -hmm. and we did future problem solving and some things like that. It was more of like, almost like an extracurricular type thing, but like, a, I'm having, like, that, that bothers me. I'm like, what do we even do? So did your school have a guidance counselor? We did, yes. Was their job primarily focused on helping students apply for colleges or were they also seen as like an on-site therapist? I saw them mostly as somebody who was helping with college decisions. So um, then was mental health ever discussed at all in your classes? I don't remember it. So did you have any like practical classes such as like shop, sewing, food or cooking, like a homemaker, um, home ec class? We had those classes, but I didn't take them. Did your school teach driver's ed or did you have to take it from a private company? No, our school taught it. Um, were you required to take it or did you have any? I think, I feel like we were required to take it if we wanted to get our license. When you were in that, do you remember, did they teach you just the basics of driving or did they teach you other practical skills? Basics of driving, but I, I think we also had to learn how to change a tire, mm -hmm. but I, can't remember anything else. Maybe to how to um, check the oil. Did your school teach cursive? Yes. How long did you have to take cursive? I feel like I started learning it in second or third grade and fifth and sixth grade. I know we still had it. We weren't really necessarily learning cursive, but we had penmanship class mm -hmm. um, where we had to practice having good penmanship. Did your school have a typing class? Yes. When did that start? I believe that I took maybe some introduction to keyboard type class, maybe in middle school, mm -hmm. but almost positive I took an actual like semester long or a year long actual typing class in high school, like ninth grade. So what were your teachers like? I feel like we had great teachers for the most part. We had, and, and most of our teachers were there kind of long term. I, the ones I remember the most, I guess, are like our PE teacher, Mr. Cavalier. He was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, everyone liked him. He was open. Like if we would wanted to do something different, like if we, if we came up with some activity, like, hey, can we, like, well, for example, our senior year, I remember we were like, hey, could we, since we have to do square dancing, if we learn really good, can we get out of school for like half a day and go to like some nursing homes and do square dancing? And he thought it was a great idea and we did it. And it was so, he was real open to ideas and things like that. I remember our, uh, my science teacher, Mrs. Bennett, she was always a lot of fun. She taught chemistry and physics and maybe earth science or something like that. But so the kids got along good with her mostly. I mean, I can't think of anyone that really, uh, I didn't get along with, I guess. So as a student, what were some of your expectations? To do your work, to behave. I think it was a lot different back then, um, comparing it to like what my kids, like my oldest son that's in high school and, and like my nieces that are in high school. When they talk about what things are like today, I'm like, we would have never gotten by with that type of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like behavior wise or like just walking around in the halls and not going to classes and stuff like that today where I'm like, no, we had to have a hall pass and we had to prove where we were going and type stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a little more discipline, uh, a little bit more strict when I was in school. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in general though, I think it was just everybody kind of knew that. You mentioned that it was a lot more discipline back then. Did your teachers have any discipline techniques or what was the punishment for breaking a rule? When I was in elementary school, I'm pretty sure that getting paddled was still a thing. Mm -hmm. I never had it happen to me, but I remember having some kids have to go to the office and getting spankings. But mostly it was like detention. Um, mm -hmm. If kids did things that were, you know, not good, they had they got detention. Or um, later, like in high school, I remember kids getting suspensions uh, a couple of times. But 
in school suspension or out of school suspension. I remember those being kind of a big deal. <laughs> so can you describe a typical school lunchtime? Yeah, we didn't have a lot of time um, for lunch, maybe like 20 minutes or mm -hmm. something like that. So when our bell rang from our class to exit our class that we were in, everybody hurried up and rushed to the lunchroom and then got in line. We had the, a lady named Imo, she's still alive and she's like 94 years old or something now, but she, um, she's in Parker Place in, in Parkersburg. Um, but anyway, she like punched our paper lunch tickets. It's much different than now. Um, mm -hmm. We had to keep track of our tickets and then we just go through the line. The food was good for the most part and we had a cafeteria. Everybody sat in there and ate. So, yeah. Yeah, did you get to sit with who you wanted or was there a seating chart? No, I'm pretty, for sure in high school we did. I, I can't remember elementary, but I feel like we got to sit with who we wanted. Did your school at all offer open campus lunch at all? No. And did you ever bring like a cold lunch to school? I didn't. Some people did, but I never did. Um, what was a popular lunch or food item when you were a kid? Pizza. They used to make pancakes, like a like a thick square pancake, <laughs> like a pan pancake. I don't know. Those are the two I kind of remember the most. When you had recess, when you were in elementary school, what was that like? Mostly, I think I remember kids playing football, playing kickball, and a lot of playground equipment, like swings and stuff like that. I don't know. I can't really remember. <laughs> Did your school provide um, like the footballs and basketballs and toys? I think so. Okay. I feel like they must have. Did you ever have indoor recess? If it was raining or too cold, I think we did. Um, so what are some games that you like to play both indoor and out? Um, I like kickball. I remember playing basketball too. I don't really remember too much about like the playground equipment stuff. I, I remember a little bit about I remember some kids being really good at like doing flips and stuff on the monkey bars, but I, I could, my sisters could do that, but I couldn't. I, I don't know if I had favorites or anything, but I do remember playing kickball. It was a lot of fun. Were there any forbidden games or activities on the playground or any rules? I'm sure there was, but I, I really don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> did you have a school nurse? We did. Did you ever have to visit the school nurse? Not much. I don't think so. I don't, I don't really remember visiting her. Did your school ever offer like eye exams or hearing tests, stuff like that? Yes, especially in elementary. Um, I remember having to put on the headphones and listen for hearing tests. Mm -hmm. And then when you were really little, did you have nap time? Yes, in kindergarten only though, I think. I don't think we had it after that. Did you ever have to bring anything from home for that? I don't remember, but I don't think so. So how did the school day end? As a pretty young kid, I had to get on the bus and head home or walk home. When I was in high school, I would pretty much always go right from school to some sort of activity with mostly sports uh, of some sort. What time did you usually get home at night? I think it was probably like around 6.30 or so. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really remember, but yeah, it had to have been around that time. Did you have any homework at night? Yeah, sometimes. What were some of your at-home expectations? I don't know. I just, I was pretty self-motivated. So, I mean, I don't feel like my parents had to like get on me every day about get your homework done. I just did it. I don't feel like they really felt like they had to you know, bother me about it a lot. Did technology change homework at all? Not really, not while I was in school. I mean, we were still using the card catalog. <laughs> what other extracurricular activities did you participate in besides sports? I was on the student council all my four years of high school. We had a Spanish club that I participated in for three years, I think. I was in vocal music. I was in a play once. It really wasn't my thing, but I thought I should try it. <laughs> what was the play? I don't know, I can't remember. Okay. It was not one that was like a popular one. Gosh, I can't think of what else I might have been involved in. I guess those were probably the main things. Um, also, while you were in school, did you ever have to take like the ITBS, Iowa assessments, or Iowa basic skills, something yes. like that? Do you know which one? Um, I remember Iowa basic skills, and I remember Iowa tests of basic skill, I mean, ITBS, I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I think those were what they were called. When did you start taking those tests? I kind of feel like I remember taking them in elementary school even, but I don't know what grade. Were your scores pretty consistent throughout the years? Yes. How did you feel about taking these tests? A little dread because it was long and you know, you just never loved sitting there taking those standardized tests. But I mean, I wasn't like scared. I always did well. I wasn't scared of doing bad or anything. I just, it was just not my, 
you know, favorite thing to do. Did you ever have to take an SAT or an ACT? I took the ACT. Did you ever take any prep classes or pretests for it? I remember when I was in seventh grade because I was in like talented and gifted and for some reason I had I went and took the ACT when I was really young like mm -hmm. in seventh grade I think but never like I didn't really take any prep classes <laughs> to do better or anything even when I was older. Do you remember your score or scores? I remember when I was in seventh grade I got like a 17 mm -hmm. and when I was a junior I think I took it again and I got a 26 I think. Do you remember, was it difficult? Parts of it were, um, definitely. Math was, the math, even though I felt like I was kind of good at math, I felt like the math was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever have to take tests to determine your aptitude or future job opportunities? I remember doing that. I don't know what they were called or I don't remember how I did or anything, but I remember doing that. Do you remember what job that the test gave you as what you should? I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then did your school have any fire or tornado drills? Yes. Okay, what were those like? I mean, probably like what they are kind of like today. I mean, fire drills, we all had to go out outside, out, out a certain door and go to a certain area. And tornado drills, we all knew kind of where we had to go and get, get against the wall and put our heads down type thing. Did you ever have any incidents regarding safety at your school? The only one that I could remember was we actually did have a fire in the lunchroom or like in the kitchen one time and so we all for real had to go outside and like I think we got out of school early that day. Okay. So how did the teachers react to that? I don't remember. I just, I kind of remember that it was winter and it was cold out and it, I was in high school though, but mm -hmm. some kids couldn't get back to their lockers um, <laughs> to get their coats and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I don't remember the teachers having any real bad reactions or funny reactions or anything. <laughs> Do you remember how you and your friends reacted or how you um, No, like kind of shocked, I think that we, that it actually happened and that the, like the whole one hallway was full of smoke and mm -hmm. At first, we didn't know how bad it was, but I don't think we were scared. I just think we were sort of like, holy cow, I can't believe this is happening. Can you describe what it was like to consolidate your senior year? Yeah, I think it was fun and interesting. I don't remember it being like super stressful or scary or anything like that. I think that there was a lot of adults that were really opinionated about how it should or shouldn't look but i don't think i ever felt like the kids had the same issues like the kids made it work i remember my junior year as we knew that the school boards were making this arrangement and we were going to go together I remember my junior year we student council met with the applington i was in parkersburg so we met with the applington student council and jointly we came up with like three options for the school colors that we would go forth with the following year the mascot and like the school song and maybe there were some other things but i remember we then we so we all came together for that and then we and then we had a vote like for the kids that were freshmen sophomores and juniors that would have to live with it mm -hmm. so then the kids got to vote on what those things were going to be what were the decisions so applington was the applington panthers and their colors was red and black and parkersburg was the crusaders and their colors was red and silver red and gold and so we came say, stayed with red and so it became like red silver and black for the colors and ended up being the Falcons um, for the uh, mascots. So, yeah. Um, you mentioned that the adults seem to take it harder than the kids. Um, can you describe some of that, like what all occurred? Well, I think a lot of the adults have, you know, like like a lot of small towns, our, the parents grew up there too. And Applington and Parkersburg are only four miles apart. So they were huge rivals. So when sports or whatever played each other, it was the biggest game of the season type deal. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was a lot of big feelings about, you know, when I, back in my day, you know, yeah. and I feel like some of that was still boiling over from people's past. And, you know, they knew that there was maybe something that happened to them that they didn't like Parkersburg or they didn't like Applington mm -hmm. or whatever. But in general, I mean, I think most people, were really good. It was there was just a handful of people. I mean, there were some people that were so felt so strongly about it that their kids, um, instead of going like they were Applington kids, like instead of going to AP, 
they pulled their kids out and they went to Ackley or something like that. So there were some families that felt very strongly about it, but in general, I would say it went pretty smooth. So how did the class structure sizes change when? Uh, yeah, it not quite doubled for me. I think when I was just in Parkersburg, I had 35 kids in my class. And then the following year, my senior year, we had 64. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it was good and there was a lot of good things. And there was a few challenging things. Like, I know there was a kid in my class from Parkersburg who, I mean, I will say my class was like, um, very academically gifted. Um, there's some very, very successful people today in my, from my class. But I had a friend who had a, over a 3.0 grade point average, like 3.2 or something like that. And he was like number 33, uh, I think, in our class. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't in the top half of our class. So like you and I wasn't even gonna let him in. But he had a good grade point average. But I mean, like once we joined the two schools, it, your class rank got really screwed around because of that. Mm -hmm. And so I remember our guidance counselor, somebody had to call you and I and beg for him to get admitted because they're like, he has good grades. Like he's a great kid. It's like all these other kids are just so smart. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I remember the same thing kind of for myself. Like I was rated 16th in my class after we joined. Mm -hmm. And so I was exactly the 25th percentile. Mm -hmm. um, and so same thing, like with some scholarships, you had to be, in the top 25 percent of your class and i just barely was mm. so did the way that the teachers taught did that change at all or did you have to get any like new supplies materials any of that i don't think so i mean the, I, I went to school in parkersburg and the high school stayed in parkersburg after we joined and so I, my setting didn't change a few of the teachers changed a few of the applington teachers came over and taught classes in app in parkersburg but for the most part, not a lot changed for me. So how did the two, you said that they seemed to get along pretty well. Would you say that would be equal what the um, other kids felt about your class? Or do you think that that was I maybe mean, I one think, sided? I think that, that people would say that. I felt like for having just one year together, people got along really well. What was the typical year round school schedule like? So just about like it is now, we'd start school mid to late August. We had pretty much school up until Thanksgiving and then Christmas, a short break for Thanksgiving and, and then a week or two off for Christmas. And then um, no spring break ever. Um, we just had like a longer Easter break, like maybe Friday and Monday off. Um, and then we were usually out sometime in May. What was summer break like? When I was a young kid, I really don't remember it that much. I remember playing outside a lot, like being outside nearly all day with my friends. When I was when I was in high school, I worked. So my summers were pretty much get up and go to work all day and then go to softball all evening. So that's pretty much what I did in, in, in high school. Would you say that was pretty typical for other students in your community? Yeah. And so then did your school ever offer any class parties or dances? Yes, I remember having dances for sure. And a, like a senior trip my senior year. Yeah, where was the senior trip to? Um, Chicago. We went to like the Science and Industry Museum. It was like a long weekend. So you said that your school offered dances. Did you have prom or homecoming? Yes, both. Okay, was homecoming seen as a formal event? No, basically like it was on Friday night after the football game. So the football players would take showers and get dressed and um, whatever we wore to the football game, like uh, jeans and a sweater or whatever, that's what we wore to the dance. And prom, was that more formal? Yes. So were there any, ever any special events at your school that involved the larger community? Music concerts and stuff, of course, like parent, I mean, not really that I can think of, except for just like spectators at events and things like that. So do you remember any major local, national, or world events that occurred during your school years? Yes, I remember my sophomore year, I think it was my sophomore year. I remember the Gulf War, the, or the first Gulf War started. Um, mm -hmm. I remember being in the locker room before a basketball game and hearing, um, hearing the president, I think, come on the radio and say that they had started 
bombing in Iraq or something, or in Kuwait. I, I can't even remember it now, but I remember that was pretty solemn. Like everybody listened and it was really quiet. I'm sure if I if refreshed my memory, I'd think of some things, but I, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. Did you have the fall of the Soviet Union during that time? I was in, I remember that happening. I feel like I might've been a little bit younger, maybe middle school, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Berlin Wall, that was, I was probably in elementary school about when all that stuff happened. Do you remember how any of that affected the school or community? Oh, I don't remember that. Anything really changing around the school okay. or the community. So what did you do after you finished school and graduated? After I graduated, I went to college one year at Mankato, Minnesota's Mankato. I was hopefully going to play scholarship or get a scholarship and play softball, but I ended up having knee surgery, a couple of them actually. So I ended that ambition and then I decided to transfer and I ended up at UNI. Um, so I graduated from UNI in 1997 and I graduated with a degree in organizational communications. When you graduated from UNI, did you enter a particular job or career? I had worked as a part-time student while I was going to college at John Deere in Waterloo. And when I graduated, they weren't hiring anybody at that moment. And so I left there and got a job um, at a small company over in Alden, Iowa. And then about nine or 10 months later, I happened to bump into somebody um, while I was shopping in Cedar Falls that I had worked with at John Deere and she told me about a job. So I applied for it and got that job. So I went back to John Deere and I worked there for 12 or 13 years. Well, I really kind of took a foot in the door type job to start, but I started um, basically as an administrative assistant and worked my way up into supervisory managerial position at the end. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed my time there. So what are some important takeaways you want people to remember? from your time at just enjoy it I mean there's so many fun activities to get involved in try things it's like the best time in life to to do something new uh, and not have to worry about anything else you don't have to worry about paying bills or doing anything like that get involved in, and make friends and and have as much fun as you can while life is still kind of sort of easy <laughs> so to speak <laughs> so did you have a best or worst day of school I can't remember that I had a best or worst. No, I don't know, I can't think of anything. Pretty neutral then? Yeah. So what are some comparisons or contrasts can you think of from your own experiences to today's education system? Or like, what are some of the changes that have happened? Technology, for sure, is huge. My kids now have laptops and iPads um, that they can bring home from school to do whatever kind of work is necessary. They all have phones. They all can communicate with their teachers. Various different platforms, uh, including email or text and things like that, but other things as well. Google Classroom, that kind of stuff. I don't even know all the terminology that they do, things they do. So that is probably the biggest, biggest thing. But I think lots of things we've talked about, like my kids have, like my oldest son, that's in high school, he has to take PE every day, uh, every semester through high school. And we never had to do that. Our, ours was like every other day and we had another class that we could slip in there on the alternating days. Like I said before, I think the, some other things are just like the discipline and teachers maybe, I feel like from some of my friends that are teachers, they don't have as much freedom to, to teach exact all the things that they might have wanted to teach because they have to stick to standards common core type standards. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think when I was in school, teachers had a lot of leeway. And so is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that we maybe didn't get to talk to you about? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay, well, awesome. That is all the questions I have for you. So yeah. thank you so much for yep. interviewing with me. Yeah, thank you. Anna.